Ronins and Skeletons, this is Internet Personality Vangelis, and DNA Design have provided a review copy of their first standalone figure release, Suzano. He is an outright love letter to Revenge of the Fallen Bludgeon, and his box art is friggin' gorgeous. I felt a great need to give it a dedicated shot or two. I'm even padding for time to make sure it fits. Ah, I'm terrible. Suzano turns into a big green tank, and it is a big green tank. Hefty, too. Looks big enough for a soft toyetic scale with a great many different car robots, be they Legends, Deluxe, or Masterpiece. There are a lot of metallic paint apps on the surface of the tank, picking out lights, grills, and other bits of sculpting. Golden bindings are painted on the somewhat loudly colored orange plate armor that kind of gives away that this ain't a normal tank. Either that or the driver loves themselves some samurai culture. The treads neither roll nor do they have hidden wheels, but for a very good reason. Literally every section of track is hinged onto the next, giving the treads a natural rumbly wriggle when you poke and prod at them. So much parts count. The turret can swivel around on a ratchet joint that's so buttery it's practically fat free. The turret is made to be removed via a D-shaped half clippy peg tab, but if you lift with extremely controlled pressure you can raise the tank off the ground by the turret alone. Don't shake it though. Also, there's an obvious robot chest on the underbelly, so don't go hunting for tank upskirts or Susano will know, you perv! By the way, those frightening looking antenna bits came packed separately in the box, and while they aren't rubbery, they have a very firm and tensile flex. Also, I have subjected them to some nonsense, mostly by accident, and they haven't broken yet. Note the dark metallic color of their plastic. Several small but key load-bearing parts of Susano's engineering are made from the same stuff, and I suspect it's specialized polymer meant to take abuse. We'll see how that goes, months and or years from now. But it seems like a pretty smart idea for durability's sake. It's best to remove the turret before going through the transformation. You technically can leave it on since it returns to that spot at the end, but the sheer amount of difficulty involved in keeping it attached while converting to robot mode is just not worth it, man. Besides, it's just a box full of weapons. See, Susano turns into a box on treads, and he does so in the spirit of Revenge of the Fallen Bludgeon. I say spirit because while the same body parts generally end up in the same tank locations, their movements are slightly different than those of the 2009 movie toy. The outer flanks still turn into the legs, but now involve a whole ton of additional reshaping, and the hips literally hook together with a connection that is way more solid and kind of clicky in hand than I was expecting. It's that polymer again. There are some parts rotations that are more aesthetic than functional, and I rather wish there was something more going on with the tread sections that end up on the shins. Susano's feet have a slide-out expansion bit that could have done with a solid click lock for its final position, too. The rest of the lower leg armor does have a pleasant peg-to-hole locking point, and I kinda dig the two-step unboxifying that it goes through. Sliding the torso down can be a bit sticky, and I find it helps if I squeeze the inner spinal column on the sides. Once you've done that, the arms are a little simpler to transform than the legs. Once again, actually unfolding them is pretty easy, but then there's a bunch of fully aesthetic swivels and folds that add to the conversion time. There's also a double axis rotational deal inside of the shoulders, and you'll want to get the arm axis rotated along the central axis until it's moved up to the top. Pretty straightforward once you see how it works, but it is an odd thing the first time through. Overall, it's one of those transformations that is a lot more daunting in concept than in practice, so just go slowly your first few times until you better grasp all of Susano's inner workings. On the bright side, it is a total breeze to pull up his head. And you can reveal a peg on either of his hip skirts to attach the katana sheath. So he can be a lefty or a righty, it's up to you. Susano is a higher budget, slightly more artistic take on the Revenge of the Fallen bludgeon design. This is a real specific thing that I'm saying. He's got the flowing tread segments, the bulkier and more angular armor lines, and the extra tank greeble. His colors are similar too, though the maroon has turned into a full-on brown. And I love the choices made here. DNA design leaned even farther into the samurai motif, with a fusion of plate armor and tread links throughout. The flowing tread segments are improved in that they're fully articulated now, rather than rubberized strips. The feet were cleaned up from demonic movie toy bird feet into tabby style boot feet. Susano takes what I liked about Revenge of the Fallen Bludgeon and fills it out with extra thick Ronin meat. 
There are a lot of great tiny gold and gunmetal paint apps throughout, but I think the face shows just how good these guys are at their detailing, from the angry red optic dots to the finely lined panel features. And yeah, I love this face. I know a lot of people don't, but the fact that I can see the lower jaw's fangs going all just just brings it together for me. If you don't like it and you get a first run Susano, there's an alternate face that can swap in after a little bit of prying and pegging. It's more plainly skeletal and certainly just as well delivered, it just doesn't have the mouth gaping factor that I'm looking for. If you put Susano's sheath on his hip, then the sword can come out. It uses a flip-out connection that defies the common palm slot system, clipping straight into the base of the hand extremely well. The flip-out bit is made of that specific durable polymer I'd mentioned, and the fit is fantastic. Shake it as much as you want. Maybe consider why you're shaking the toy this much. Are you just showing off for a camera? And maybe reconsider your life. The backpack has got a spring-loaded gimmick to reveal two smaller blades, and be aware that their sheaths may push farther down into the backpack than they should if you push the swords into them too hard. Those Tontos use a single-tab connection that isn't as ridiculously solid as the Katana, but is still really darn good. The two missile pods and machine gun on the turret can all pop off and connect together to form the Teppo gun. It provides Suzano with some pleasing range kaboom, and tabs into his hand the same way as his Tonto blades. Did I mention yet how much I like that all of his weaponry can end up stored in his removable backpack? There's something fun and G.I. Joe about that. Suzano's heads on a ball socket joint, it can look left and right with little impediment despite the big chin on this particular face. It'll bump sometimes, but not for long. He can also look up, he can kinda look down, and he can tilt his head quizzically to go like... Huh? His shoulders can go forwards and backwards on a simple uh, pin hinge type thing, and then there's a second swivel right underneath that one, so you can move that initial axis around in a circular motion uh, within the well of this shoulder block. The shoulder block itself can also move outwards like thus. Uh, you've seen that double hinge in the transformation before. It doesn't do a whole lot for articulation other than letting the main axis of his shoulders come a little bit more forward for holding the sword in two hands, but once you have this figure in hand it makes a lot more sense. The uh, pauldrons can wiggle, the treads can bend. There is a clicky left-right joint uh, up in there, and then you can also move in the same axis on this tread wheel. You can turn the tread wheel here, you can turn the bicep here, you can turn the elbow here. Uh, all this stuff can swivel around uh, to your heart's content. There's a single jointed 90 degree elbow, and if you unclick the transformation joint a little, you can get a deeper double jointed style curl out of it. I just don't like doing that, and I find I don't often need it. The wrist can turn happily, left or right, and then uh, this hand makes a pretty decent fist, and the fingers are all articulated, as is the thumb. Uh, they're all connected via a ball socket connection, which means that there is a touch of spread thanks to uh, the size of the socket, and the thumb can move around quite happily. The thumb also has a hinge and a knuckle hinge. The fingers just have one hinge. It is here in the middle of the finger. And the ball socket connection does unfortunately mean these things can pop loose if you manhandle them a little bit. But I have not had finger poppage happen like at a frequency that I would call annoying. I've just had it happen mostly when I have a camera on. The big piece of pelvic skirt treddy stuff can hinge around on a couple of joints in some windblown ways. And you can fold these to clear space for the actual hip joints, which we'll just get a good clear view of here. They can ratchet forwards, ratchet a little ways back, but then they will bump into the backpack if you've got it there. It's a fairly tight joint. They can also ratchet outwards, and you probably, if you like removed parts, you could make enough room to do the splits, but uh, this is about as far as I can comfortably get it to go out. Uh, also, these chunks of tread are, much like all the other ones, they are all jointed together and pretty darn good at getting out of the way and not hindering stuff. There's also a thigh swivel. There is a double jointed knee. And the two points of, uh, of motion here, there's one here, and then inside this wheel is the other one. It's all pretty darn tight. Now, if you want to fully double joint curl the knee, you've got to swivel this piece of tread sideways so it makes enough room for him to be able to sit down properly uh, on the floor. 
Other than that, he's also got an ankle tilt right down here and a toe joint. And the entire foot can also pivot just backwards, mostly. Forwards need to use that toe joint, but it can go backwards a bit. And the one bummer about the, the, the foot here is that this piece constantly gets compressed back in when I'm messing with it, and I really wish it click-locked out there. The bright side is that there are rubber thingies here and here, which mean this guy grips onto a surface really darn well. Uh, then, to counterpoint that, the one bummer about that part of the experience is... On this side, this piece is super darn tight. It's great. On this side, this piece is not super darn tight. It's kind of loose. And it gets tighter as I go up here. I once used a, uh, a, a puncher to push that pin back in. It made this super tight again until I transformed it. Then that, like, unscrewed the pin, for lack of a better term. So uh, hopefully that's something that is fixed up in the final production of this guy, in the... Uh, the little delay towards his release that happened. And uh, this also is a good time to mention that he is a jiggly toy to mess with. Not jiggly in that he feels poorly built or like he's gonna break, just jiggly in that there are a lot of moving parts on this dude. And it's pretty easy for things to get, you know, flicked in and out of place, bumped out of a careful alignment. And depending on your taste, that might annoy you. I know there are some people who do not care about that kind of thing, but if you really like to have your figures looking like they are, you know, properly posed right down to all the armor plating, this guy can get knocked out of alignment on uh, micrometer levels pretty easily. Also, the waist joint thing. He does have a waist joint. You gotta get this backpack off, though. And then this part, which is usually slid up, you've got to make sure it's slid down so it can do that. Then you've also got to open up these two things, lift this up, and now you can get his waist to turn. If you turn his waist and try to reset all of this, the amount of motion you get is pretty minimal, and this stuff all ends up looking really janky, and uh, you can't really keep his backpack on and turn the waist. So the waist joint on this dude, it just feels like uh, a, a valiant attempt that absolutely did not really work. If the swivel was up in here somehow rather than down here, I think that would have been for the better. I'm fairly pleased with this dude's posability for the most part. I've not found myself like stuck for any major poses I'd want a giant robot skeleton samurai to do. And he can totally friggin like squat kneel down in front of his sword like a proper ronin. Let's talk about what doesn't work. Susano is a fiddly, slightly jiggly toy. He doesn't fall apart, nor does he implode on himself. He just always has this feeling of stuff moving. It's baggage that comes with the base design intent of the piece, the love letter to Revenge of the Fallen Bludgeon thing, so I can't say there are a lot of easy solutions. Just be aware of that going in if you're the type who needs every little part to be in just the right spot. Susano is, regardless of that, a bloody solid piece for DNA Design's first full-figure production. Nothing feels fragile, thanks in part to the specific polymer used for all the scary bits. Like I said, we'll see how all that fares a year or two from now, but in the month of release, it feels very good beneath my fingertips. His transformation isn't complicated so much as esoteric in places, and while the turret backpack kinda has to pop on and off, the fact that Bludgeon can transform from a full robot into a full treaded box without it somehow makes it feel at least logical to me. Like, the turret backpack also contains all the weaponry. Without it, this is still bludgeon, just a castrated, unarmed bludgeon, in either mode. As for where he fits in, well, that's up to your own aesthetic tolerances. He's sized to look masterpiece alike in the eye, he's stylized to wade into the general mush of neo-classics, his major design intent seems to be a walking love letter to Revenge of the Fallen Bludgeon. It might frustrate you, but I fully support how aggressively this dude isn't trying to blend in. End of the day, I really want to see what DNA design can do with a less busy design. Susano's armor plating often reminds you that it's there, especially if you try to engage with the unfortunately buried waist joint. A figure built like this, but with a more straightforward silhouette, like a simple car robot, or at least a guy who isn't wearing layered plates? I'd like to check out one of those done by these folks. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Vangelis, and here's a dumbass redeco idea for this piece. Shiny orange and metallic blue. Susano orange arms. Get all Hanamichi on stage with it. Kokokata orina. Oh, it's the end card. All right. I see myself then.